Hey guys, and welcome back to Mobile Dwellings, where we build, live in, and tour homes you can take with you on the road. In today's video, we are installing the water tanks underneath the bus and doing the waste plumbing. And let's get right into it. Now we are using a no weld system where basically we are screwing and bolting these unistrut pieces to the frame of the bus. From there we attach some all thread with some nuts and washers and a second piece of unistrut on the bottom. This provides our platform to hang our gray water tanks in and it's pretty effective. Okay, so this is great. It is getting very hard to push this tank through now with all this friction. This is exactly what I was hoping for. So this is actually going pretty well and I just have some more adjusting to do and I've got to add the fist support in the center. So Sam is installing a tank sensor in this tank so that we know when the gray is full, which is handy. I'll show it to you. It'll be sitting inside of the tank and it'll get wired up. And then we have a gauge, which will be in here to go along with the fresh water. Not sure where the gauge is. All right, so this guy, it's a little different than the fresh water tank. This has like this kind of beefier connection to make inside the tank. That's why it's shaped like a C. So what you do is you thread one screw on so you don't lose the C in the tank and then you slip it in there and get it down into the tank. Okay, sadly I cross-threaded one of these screws, but this clamp is in here. I don't think it's gonna leak, hopefully it doesn't. And now all you gotta do is tighten this sensor on with the Teflon tape on it. We will of course get some 12 volt power to this and then we'll be able to see when the tank is empty or full from the inside the rig. So I have everything I need to plumb from the kitchen sink down onto the bus and into the tank. So let's start inside where it's nice and clean and I'll work my way to the bottom of the bus. This guy gets screwed onto here. You go in here, like that. We want this trap basically up here as high as possible because we want as much space in here available to us to use. So we're gonna cut a figure's worth off of this. All right, so I've got my trap all set up here with this extension. The only problem is that I do not have a coupling to attach that to inch and a quarter. This is inch and a half and I have inch and a quarter hose because I don't want to go that wide. It's just one little coupling that I'm going to have to add in later. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole through the base of the cabinet, through the floor, and stick my big drain pipe down it. No. Can't put that on YouTube. Guys, I gotta be honest with you. I am not motivated to finish this project. Maybe because it's happening too fast. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Every little thing makes me wanna give up big time. Like, I couldn't fit this drill through this hole with enough distance to get through the floor with my hole saw. So what I wanna do is I wanna drill a really long pilot hole and then drill it up from the bottom. That would be great. However, I don't have a really long pilot hole tool. I just gotta keep going. I mean, I, I can't quit, so. Here I am, I've got this ridiculous contraption. Look at this thing. So silly. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I still have the will somehow. I, I wish I could explain this to you guys. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm just not motivated. I'm having a really tough time. Okay, okay, keep going. I do have a minor problem though, and it means more work for me. This right here, 
This piece of Unistrat is blocking my hole right there, which means I either need to like instantly elbow over or I need to move this. See that? There's the pipe. A little bit of a problem. Okay, so I have moved this piece of Unistrat over. Now I finally have the clearance I need for my pipe. So let's put a 45 on this thing. All right, so we got that right there. Now we're gonna do another piece of pipe here and another 45 to go into the tank. All right, so we've got this sticking out here. We're going to be doing another 45 to bring it down to the tank. And now I just need to put the tank back in place and um, see where this will end up at. These are really tight working quarters, but I've got this in place. So Unisteel is gonna go about here, and I'm not sure I can drill it from underneath here. In fact, I'm sure I can't, so. All right, so I'm about to cut my first Unisteel hole in the tank. It is supposedly a waterproof seal. However, it just seems sketchy to me, but everybody says it works. So I've got the right size hole saw for my Unisteel. I've got a three inch Unisteel, and I needed exactly a four inch hole saw. Time to cut this hole. Hey Sam, Yeah. should I do this? <laughs> I'm just so nervous about the hole size? Yeah, four inch hole saw, three inch unit seal. You know, assuming that the thickness of this is like a quarter of an inch, right off the bottom. I think it's good. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <You> sure? <sighs> uh, that's definitely high enough. <laughs> All right, well, I needed Sam's support emotionally, but I think we did it. We got this hole really low. Here it is right there. I gotta get this stuff out of here, and I'll pop my Uniseal in. All right, now I gotta cut a piece of this and slam it in there. Okay, so we need to lubricate this to get it into that Uniseal. So I'm gonna probably go get a little bit of Dawn soap. Okay, so I have some hand soap on here. Hopefully it does the trick. All right, it's really dark. This is not quite working for me. I'm gonna have to do some research, get some tips and tricks for getting this thing in because it's such a short piece, it's hard to push on it. And uh, I think I need a better lubricant. All right, talk to you guys tomorrow. All right, so I've got to get this into the Uniseal. I think the best thing to help me with that would be petroleum jelly. Val told me that we actually have a diaper rash product that is like mostly petroleum jelly. So it's in the bed, a little messy in here, but you know, this life. Um, is that? Wow, healing ointment, 41% petroleum. Let's give it a shot. All right, so moving on to the next thing, I think I'm gonna have to angle this edge a little bit because I'm not able to get this on. Okay, so as you can see, I used that multi-tool to just take the edge off this thing and hopefully this will allow me to push it in. We are in. And now this dump valve can sit right about here. If that guy gets glued on, we got a little attachment to glue on here. Open that to dump. Thank you, Val, for the skin ointment cream. I'm gonna go put this back now. Okay, so now that we have this all mocked in, we're gonna take this tank out so that we can drill our holes and put our Uniseal in for our plumbing fixtures on that side of the bus. This one is for the kitchen sink. It is going to be inch and a quarter. And this one is going to be inch and a half. So the inch and quarter needs a two inch bit. The inch and a half is going to use a two and a half inch bit. Oh my God. There's a 
cozy little scene happening inside right now. Oh, hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. You want to say hi to Daddy? <laughs> she has some funny faces. <laughs> She's saying hi. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay guys, so this is basically all the holes we're going to be putting in this tank. Inch and a quarter hole, inch and a half hole. Now I can put this back in place and work on the front of the tank. I've got some more connections to make. Okay, so the first thing we are adding here is a half inch brass plug. These plastic plugs are probably okay to use. I actually kept them on my tank. They've worked just fine. This is just a little bit of extra peace of mind. You know, whenever we make a connection like this, we definitely want to use this plumber's putty. What's it called? Pipe dope. Remember we're tightening brass into plastic here so we don't want to go crazy with this thing. Okay, the second thing we are doing is we're going to add a really small vent over here. We're going to use a uh, piece of half inch PVC and this will allow some air to escape from the tank when it's filling with water and when it's sloshing back and forth. The air has to go somewhere so we're going to give it a path under the bus. Hopefully it's not going to be super stinky for anybody walking by. If it is, we'll come up with a new plan and cap it with a cap. Now I'm gonna make this connection when this tank is in there. I won't be able to get it high enough and still clear this. The next thing we're doing is we're going from half inch MIP to three quarter hose barb. And this will be for the P-line from the composting toilet. We don't want to have to dump every single day from a jug somewhere, so it's going in this tank. This tank is turning into a black tank. Look at that thing. It's completely cattywampus. I don't know if I can even get it out. Hopefully I can. Those threads look pretty bad, so hopefully we're not leaking from there. Okay, great. Luckily this is threading on fine, so we are going to be okay. Now this is going to attach to a three-quarter rated vinyl hose. More on that later. Like that. Okay, so for our final connection, we need to prevent this from leaking out water. And this little red cap thing here is not going to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into something that you could sh you could spray a hose in here, and then it would help clean out the tank and send water out this way as it bounces off the back. So to do that, I have an interesting predicament. Predicament. This is inch and a quarter OD. I couldn't find an inch and a quarter PVC ball valve, and I also couldn't find an inch and a quarter to a one inch step down that was gonna work for me. A pretty talented sales associate at Home Depot found this for me. This is actually a washing machine drain, and washing machine outlets are either inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, or one inch. So this actually steps me down from inch and a quarter to one inch. So I'm gonna take this whole thing off attach that here, clamp it, and then attach my barb fitting and my PVC ball valve to this. Should work, my leak. Okay, so I have a one inch to three quarter barb adapter. So if this guy fits in here, which it does, and this guy fits on here, that might actually work out really well. This is actually gonna work. Okay, now right here, we have a PVC ball valve. And then finally we have we have a three-quarter MIP to three-quarter garden hose attachment. So now you can attach a garden hose to the end of this and shoot water into the tank. And hopefully, when you're not doing that, none of this leaks. Now I will take the time to link to every single one of these items. So if you want to replicate this, you can do that with the parts linked below in the description. Alright, so while we got the tank out, let's glue the dump valve and then let's shoot some water in here to see if any of this leaks. These things are not supposed to leak, however. I will not be able to access this seam later. I'm just gonna put some silicone on there because it's gonna be inaccessible and just to sort of adjust in case. These also tend to leak right here, so I'm gonna put some silicone on here as well. Residential code says you need a purple primer for your PVC. We don't really care about residential code. Having primer is a good idea. Uh, however, we don't need to be purple, so get yourself some clear cleaner slash primer. Once you put this PVC on here, you're only gonna have a little bit of time to make your attachment. It's basically like 10 seconds till it's like all sealed up. So just be aware of that. All right, and that is on there. Let me show you something. There's one instruction I didn't follow. 
You're supposed to hold your pipe in for 30 seconds because it actually pushes itself out. You can see that happened a bit. Came out like an eighth of an inch, no big deal. While we let this dry, let's go into the bus, make a hole in the bottom of the composting toilet so we can route this braided vinyl line to the tank. Okay, so we are going to be pushing this hose through the floor, like right there. Alright, so that is on there. Okay, so there's our P line. Before I push this tank in here for good, there's something that's been bothering me a little bit. We never used any thread sealant, nylon lock nuts, or lock washers when installing these hanging tanks. We didn't use the lock washers because they're not really good at preventing things from loosening due to vibrations, or so I've read. I know that nylon lock nuts are better for that. However, we were not able, given the amount of space we had to work in, to um, clamp nylon lock nuts over these things. It just was not working out for us. We were gonna use thread sealant, we forgot to buy it. And as a last ditch effort, I'm gonna take some of this silicone and I'm gonna put it where the uh, all thread meets the nut. I'm thinking that that will keep the nut from being able to vibrate and loosen and will give us a bit of peace of mind on that level. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, we have to be done doing this. Um, this is what it looks like, by the way. So I did it here, and I also did it as best as I could up there. Let's hopefully put this tank in there for the last time. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to push this any further right now because I've got plenty of work to do behind the tank, but let's fill this with water and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, we are filling with water. Uh, uh. It's about to start flowing out. Now I'm going to let it stop there because I want to see if there's any leaks. We are not leaking from anywhere over here, anywhere along here, although it hasn't reached the top. It's not leaking on the bottom and I don't think it's going to leak on the top. Which means that everything has gone according to plan and so far I can confidently say you can at least copy the methods that I'm using here as long as you execute them well. So let's move on with the plumbing. Okay, so I just did a thing in preparation for doing a big scary thing, and that's cutting a four and a half inch hole in this floor. That's a huge hole, never fun to do that. But uh, here's my location. We're gonna be drilling it. This will be the shower drain. So that is centered between the frame underneath the bus, and it's in a position where there are no obstructions. When you map this all out, odds are you might have an obstruction right in the center of your shower. So what that means is you're gonna have to have an offset drain. Luckily with the Curdy shower base that we're gonna use, it's easily adaptable to an offset drain. So that's kind of why we picked it. Maybe this is my last time going under the bus. It's fine. Like you said that like a hundred times. <laughs> it's possible that this is the last time. It's not though. So that is all done. We didn't have space for a trap here, so we've got the HEPFO valve, and then we have Studer vent, and that's so that plenty of air will enter the tank while it's draining. But when it's not draining and sloshing it around, that's a one-way valve, so air won't go out. It'll just come in. Simple stuff. Make sure you do a good job with the PVC cleaner slash primer and the glue. Take your time fitting these together because you get it right, you do it once. So, uh, plumbing. I got it. Maybe this is my last time crawling from out of here, but it's probably not. This thing makes really cool music. P 
key line is engaged. Quite a process. All right guys, so the tank's basically all done. The last thing is that I wanna screw these boards down to this unistrut because as you can see, the unistrut can move a bit. The tank's being supported in different places. I do think that screwing these in is going to stiffen that up. It'd be good to have these secured anyway. So I'm gonna go underneath here. I'm gonna screw some screws with some washers through the wood from here. And then when that's done, I mean, this is already like really stiff. It's not gonna move. But right now the unistrut can vibrate. So we're gonna just alleviate that with a little bit more work. All right guys, one done and um, four or five more to go, six more, something like that. All right, so I just finished screwing every one of these boards in and now this thing is gonna be rock solid. I haven't actually shaken on it yet, but I doubt it's gonna move at all. Yeah, this thing is just in there so tight. Everything went really well, and I'm pretty confident that you can mostly copy what I've done here and get similar results. Of course, always do a little bit of research. If you don't like something that I did, do it a little bit differently. I'm happy with this. You probably will be too. Oh wait, crap. Okay, minor adjustment to the plumbing. I'm patching the wall here. The reality was we needed to access our plumbing and we were gonna have to cut in an access door. Didn't love how that looked cosmetically. I couldn't find any that I liked. I'm actually going to secure this long term and I've made just enough space to be able to add this elbow. This little guy right here is like really like right in level with that. And then this clears the wall. So I'm gonna glue in this and this. It's gonna be a good long term solution. You won't be able to open a door and access this stuff, but you will be able to make this hose connection from underneath. It's really no fussing to do. And then you reach up, pull this handle, which I've done, so it's not that hard. All right, so that's all done and the plumbing is done and the tank is hung and you guys can go. Love you guys. Hit that like button, subscribe for more. Peace.